this. The fingerprint, not the finger public key. The fingerprint. That's the fingerprint of your public key. That points to your public key. So, so, so the, way, the, way it, the way I think it should work is you, uh, uh, Tony and I meet up at a key signing party. He hands me his slip of paper that's got that on it. And he shows me his ID. Maybe he'll show me his driver's license and his passport. And I'll look at the passport and make sure the photo matches tell me. I'll look at the driver's license and make sure it matches tell me. And then I'll, I'll make a note on that little slip of paper saying, yeah, I trust him. Okay. Then I go home and I import his key from the, from, the, uh, from the key server. And I look at the fingerprint on the key that I downloaded and compare it with the fingerprint on the piece of paper that I have. If they match, I trust Tony's. I trust that what I just downloaded belongs to Tony Beavis. And then I, I in my, you're going to show the command you, you run to, to actually Sorry. sign that. No, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna do it on the GUI version because I. That's fine. That's fine. I will tell my key ring that I trust that key, and so that that is really Tony's key, and I'm good to go. I can I can encrypt messages to Tony and and trust that when Tony sends me a message, it came from him. So at the key signing party, you're going with people that you're going to be sending sending email to. Well, well, not necessarily. I mean, potentially you would. But well, or, or data files. But, yeah, or but, data files. But I mean, the, the whole idea is to get your key signed to verify that there are people that have met you right. and, and verifies that you are who you say you are. And they, each person, has been listed there saying, yes, he says he's Tony. So when I go to because key, I've met him, when I, I go to the key, license. when I go to the key server and download Good. Tony's key, I can see who signed Tony's key. Right. Okay. And, and if, if I see my friends in that list and they trust Tony, that gives me a greater sense of confidence that I, I trust this Tony. Well, Even if I've never met him. Not that you can trust him, but that, that, that individual <laughs> who owns the government issued ID yes. is the individual who has access yeah, to that yes. key. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. And I can so trust that key that belongs key. to Tony. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. So again, this and, and what we're seeing back here is that. There could be lots of people having this eight character number right here. But that eight character number is really the only the very little bit of your entire fingerprint. Right? So what you can do by you could say read this off and when you search for you can search by for an eight character thing and only you know ten people are gonna show up. And or unless you feel wanna type out the entire fingerprint. Uh, it's up to you. This might seem like a strange path, but if you go to like the forensics and the stego side of things, like take a JPEG image for example, you can open up in a hex editor and you're going to get probably three megabytes of just lines of hex code. Could you essentially apply the same thing to say a JPEG image? You can encrypt a JPEG. Are um, you saying you, you want to look at the key? Could you just, uh, could you encrypt the actual hex code of the JPEG image and then send it, say, a text file, and then uh, the other person on the other end decrypts it. Would it come out the same like that? It would. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. once it's encrypted, it comes back to the original state, and that hex is a representation of that picture. You can also do the image, you know, any file. It doesn't have to be a text file, it can be an image, it can be a, a compressed archive. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then you can use a setup with your email. Uh, I use Evolution, uh, so I know it works pretty well with that. Uh, you can use it with Kmail, which is the default mail client for KDE. Uh, and then Claws Mail, Webmail, Mud, and Thunderbird. Um, the Thunderbird one, I've heard a lot of people have issues with it. Um, it's just there's funny quirks. Uh, it still works, but it's sometimes it, it encrypts using a, like the your there's a backup key or a secondary key it uses instead for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but anyway, uh, to, to set up or Google just announced this is Google announced that they're gonna have a plugin for Chrome and, uh, and a hook into Gmail so that you can use GPG and with Gmail and they're releasing I think they've already released the source code to the plugin so you can see the plugin and, oh, yeah. and, and Trust that it works. Uh, unfortunately, you have to be running Chrome and right. Gmail to take advantage of it. Well, there there are multiple uh, Chrome extensions that will do that. It's just the the 
the Google one probably work the best out of other ones. And if you can see the code, then you can verify that they're not actually doing something in the background. Yeah. Do you so know so they just go and work with Chromium. Uh, Anything else has got to scrape essentially the Gmail, and what they're going to do is give you the, they're going to extend, put an extension into Chromium, or into Chrome, and then use, utilize that from Gmail. And so Gmail will be integrated with it. Anything else is basically going to go scraping yeah. through HTML and Gmail and yeah. and do it. And so but with the source code, it shouldn't be long before somebody's going right. to plug in for Firefox to do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what you'll have then is is public keys from any number of people you correspond with. Is that right? And when you send them an email, is it going to automatically then encrypt them according to that public key and send it out? Is, is that the yeah, well, that's your mail client does that for you. You don't have, you don't have right. to say, When you stick in the email address, it looks through your key, your key ring, saying who has public this email address. And then it encrypts it that key. Have you got a choice of saying whether it automatically encrypt for that? Or, right. And if you, you'd have to send other people your public key, and then the stuff that they'd be sending would be Yeah, you, you can send it out. Um, the easier way is to have them look for you on the key server. Uh, no, so well, yeah, it could it also depend upon like the protocol. So, um, like uh, we were discussing, so right, could, that's it could vary up on the protocol, right? So if I'm using SMTP, then would be that, that doesn't matter, the protocol that the mail server is using or that your client is using, because your client is doing the encryption and then sending it. That's all going to transport it's message. Just all the protocol uses the encrypted message. Yeah. Right. And it's just an attachment, really. It's a like, This could be like uh, encryptions built into the <coughs> protocol also, right? so, Well, there's, there's, S, there's SMTP over SSL. That's a whole different thing. That's yeah, just, that's different. That so, just encrypts it on the wire. And, and really, that's the only encryption between you and your mail server. Yeah. Once it leaves the mail server, it's unencrypted. Yep. Unless there's more encryption there, but that's no guarantee. Right. Right. Um, what happens if you have multiple people in your two? Does it use? Does it send each one the encrypted using their um, yeah. public key? Yeah. It encrypts. Yeah. So if, say if I'm sending one message to five people, it encrypts each one for each person. It encrypts it separately and sends it. Obviously and then their mail comes. client will read through that saying, <laughs> this is the one for me, decrypts it and shows it to you. Obviously then it takes a lot longer for you to send that message. It's still yeah. pretty quick. Well, it's still pretty quick. But, but, but yeah. you're sending one copy per, you have to do that, you have to transfer outbound a completely different message. Five, right. separate, five separate. Yeah. So if, if you're, one if times you're using five. text files or, or just an email message, then it still it will be fairly quick because it's a small file. If you're in trying to encrypt and send it, you know, a, a 300 meg file, then it's going to have to send out, you know, five people. It's 1,500. Well, it's like five pictures will probably kill a few uh, mail servers, so it'll <laughs> yeah, take a while to yeah, get them off the, the, off the line. George, were you going to say something? Oh, yeah. I was going to say that the headers don't get encrypted, though, right? So no, you're right. still say so they can still see a terrorist. the metadata is yeah. still there, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. From another terrorist, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. The metadata is still there so they can okay. see that you're sending an encrypted message to yeah. some random person that they probably deem as a terrorist. Random subject as well is clear text, yeah. Right, yeah, that metadata is in clear text. Anybody can read that. Again, unless your connection and all mail server connections in between are encrypted. Will there be any classification? So a, don't worry, NSA has the server here. Is there? A, it's like all one set of uh, the data plus the metadata that are classified things. Like one thing you just see that the uh, being I, transmitted data and other thing would be like. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure what you're getting at. Um, I mean, uh, if you all are using the same mail server, then your connection to the, as long as you trust everybody else is using encryption to do that. Server? Are you talking about like a uh, a standard between sending an uh, encryption between email servers, or I'm not sure where you're going with that. So between servers and uh, ultimately, it, you it's possible, but it's not widely used. There, yeah, there is a standard, and I'm not sure what it is because I don't run a mail server. Again, I, this is mainly on you know two people communicating. Oh, we're doing the to and from bit. Is there a method 
you have a boss, you have a receptionist, and you send him an email. She has to open it, read the first paragraph, find out whether he's interested or not. If she has his public or his private key, then she can do that. No. If she he, has, he doesn't want her to read the substance of oh. it. He just wants her to sort it. Then that is a the, terrible the, situation. Well, no, you could use um, you the, me sending it to the boss. I would have to put some kind of message in, in the subject line because the subject line is still clear text, so she'd be able to read that. But she doesn't know who it's from. Yeah, that's what I would have encrypted. All she read is the subject line. Anybody can fake that. All right, so K mail takes a couple more steps. So right yeah, off when I send my that. mother, it's not, she, anyone that I'm communicating with have, oh, has to do the same thing, has to set this up. Actually, the very first setup them. is complex for a few, like with, with the evolution, it's fairly easy, as long as you have your own key. Or you, so what I would do is I would go to my mom's computer, create the key for her, send it out to the public key server, set up her mail client, and then I can walk away, and she and I can send mail encrypted. There's nothing else she has to do other than say, send Tony a message. You know, I, I don't know why we want to encrypt my <laughs> recipes, but here yeah. you go. <laughs> and then she can send it. Or it's a secret recipe. Yeah. Coca Cola, Frito Lay. Bush beans. You know, <laughs> you can send it. So but I can have people I send encrypted. You have to trust that they can send it up. But I can also send unencrypted to other people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not an all or nothing. It's you choose the individual people that encrypt it to. So um, basically, you could set it up so that messages I send to him are encrypted, to him are encrypted, but to the rest of the people, it's not encrypted. It's and per message. It's actually per message. Per message. It's not per person. It's it's per the message. So I can send you two unencrypted messages. The next one I can send encrypted, and then I can send you two more unencrypted. It's Every single message you send, you tell when you want to encrypt it or not. And that's part of your mail plan. Okay. Yeah. Can't you take uh, a file, encrypt it with some recipient's key, and then take, put that in the file and encrypt that with another person's key, and then the secretary would 